let's learn one new term carries inward carries inward means this is an expense for the firm okay let me explain with the help of some example suppose you are running a bookshop in delhi and you are selling the books suppose online and you buy the goods from haryana and sell the goods to punjab but your business is, or your shop is established in delhi suppose you buy the goods for rupees 2000 from haryana and then sell the goods to punjab at rupees 3000 naturally you are buying the goods at lower price and selling the goods at higher price so when you buy the goods from Haryana, you have to arrange some vehicle, truck, tempo or something that can carry your books from Haryana to Punjab. Suppose you agree to pay rupees 1000 to the owner of the van who can bring the books from the publisher in Haryana and can bring the books to your shop in Delhi. That expense of rupees 1000 will be called carries because he will be carrying your books from Haryana to Punjab and that expense is called carriers and this is carriers inward so any money paid or spent for carrying the goods is called carriers so because you are getting the goods in your shop so it will be called carries inward when you buy the goods from Haryana and bring it to your shop in Delhi. Suppose you get the order from Punjab and then you again arrange a van or tempo or truck to carry your books to Punjab to the customer and you pay the carries for that, that will be called carries outward because your goods are going out. But in the previous example, your books were coming inside that's why it was called carries inward okay let's do one more practical question suppose he starts business with cash rupees 5000 purchased goods rupees 1000 sold goods to C costing rupees 800 for rupees 3000 paid carries inward rupees 1000 closing stock as on 31st March 2013 rupees 200 this is a question and we have to create accounting equation so let's draw the format for accounting equation so on left side one column is for capital and then liabilities on asset side I'm going to create three columns one is for cash one is for stock and one is for debtors so transaction number one a starts business with cash rupees 5000 so capital 5000 cash 5000 next transaction purchase goods rupees 1000 these were the cash purchases so in the cash column 5000 minus 1000 and on stock side plus 1000 so the new equation will be capital 5000 cash 4000 and stock 1000 sold goods to see costing rupees 800 for rupees 3000 it means the goods have been sold on credit basis to see because they have not mentioned whether the sales were cash or credit but they have mentioned the name of the customer that is C so it will be assumed that these were credit sales it means goods were sold to the customer and the name of the customer is C but the money was not received at the time of transaction the money will be received in future but the cost of the goods was 800 and it has been sold for rupees 3000 there is profit of rupees 2200 if the goods are sold on credit basis at profit it doesn't mean that we have not earned the profit if we have not received the cash so you can't say that we have not earned the profit the profit has been earned 
but the money has not yet been received. So let's do the equation. Because there is a profit of rupees 2200, it will be added to the capital plus 2200. And on liability side, nothing. On cash, nothing because we have not received any cash. But we have lost the stock of rupees 800. So minus 800 in the column of stock plus 3000 in the column of debtors because we have created debtors by selling the goods on credit basis. Debtors is always our asset. So the new equation will be capital 7200, liability 0, cash 4000, stock 200, debtors 3000. Now let's move to the next transaction. Paid carries inward, rupees 1000. This is the expense. And you know, whenever there is loss or expense, there is decrease in the capital. So in the capital column, minus 1000. Because this is the expense. Expenses always reduce our capital. On the cash column, minus 1000. Stock, nothing. Debtors, nothing. So the new equation will be capital 6200, cash 3000, stock 200, debtors 3000. And you know, the last equation can be converted into balance sheet. So draw the format of balance sheet and on the top, write down balance sheet as on 31st March 2013. So on capital plus liability side, capital 6200. Now please come on asset side. Cash 3000, stock 200, debtors 3000, and the totals on both sides 6200. You know, the total of balance sheet should always be equal. In any case, you find that the totals of both sides is not equal. It means you have made some mistake. You must check your question again.